Shalom and greetings, brothers and sisters, wherever you may be around the world. Thank you for joining us for today's discussion. And as always, first of all, welcome, Baruch. Shalom, Christian. How are you guys doing and your family there in Sydney? We're doing very well, very well. And yourselves in Israel? How's things in Israel? Uh, wet, windy, and cold, but uh, rain's important. We're always thankful when we get rain in Israel. That's right. Great to hear. Well, brothers and sisters, thank you once again for joining us for today's discussion, which is uh, quite an interesting one and uh, very widely debated amongst believers. That is the subject of dreams. Uh, what we'll be looking at, of course, is what the Bible tells us. and That's what really matters. It doesn't matter about my opinion or anyone else's opinion. It's personal opinions. It's what the word of God tells us. So, Baruch, if you are ready, let's begin. Let's begin, Christian. Okay, so uh, once again, brothers and sisters, of course, you will see some headings that are not only in English, but in Spanish, because uh, God willing, as always, we hope this will be translated for the Spanish speaking viewers. So um, hence, that's why you've got in both English and Spanish, but we will commence. So what we'll be studying today, uh, predominantly three things. Do all dreams come from God? It's a very important question. Examples of dreams in the Bible. And also, of course, what to be careful with, what to watch out for. Um, just as via way of introduction, of course, as I always say, brothers and sisters, we understand that there are so many other scriptures that we could be using in this study. However, we are kind of limited with time on each video. So please bear with us. What we thought we'd do, first of all, is put a basic uh, introduction to dreams. So we put here dreams from God are only on very special events. For example, the dreams in Genesis were only given to the patriarchs or the fathers of Israel. God had a special relationship with these men because he had promised Abraham that through him and his seed, all the families of the earth would be blessed. And we refer you to Genesis 12. Consequently, God was carefully guiding and directing the development of the nation of Israel. Others in the Old Testament, including the judges and prophets of Israel, the Pharaoh of Egypt, kings of nations, received dreams because of their actions directly affected Israel. In the New Testament, God directed Yeshua's birth, childhood and death through dreams sent to significant people in these experiences. Again, Yeshua's life and death were pivotal events for Israel and for all mankind. So not just Israel, but for everyone. So we will see that God communicates through dreams rarely and usually if it's directing a specific event. Your opening comments, bro. Yeah, this, this is so well said. Uh, Christian, I know you put that together and it, it really summarizes where, where I am. Dreams are, as you pointed out, very rare, special people, usually in very prominent positions, wanting to affect and reveal things that have, have worldwide implications. So this idea that, you know, keep a notebook by your bed, write down your dreams, God's communicating with you through that. This is not at all scriptural. It's something that people want to, to do, to sensationalize, to prey on people, to sell a notebook, to, to teach you how to interpret your dreams. I can say that I'm 50, almost 58 years old, and I have never had a dream that, that I can say this is God communicating with me through some dream. So I think it's very rare and for very prominent people that God used in a major way for, for his purposes that impacted, impacted the world, not just a few people's lives. Okay, thank you. Now we're going to look at some examples of dreams in the Bible. Genesis 28 verses 10 to 12. Now Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set and he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head and he lay down in that place to sleep. Then he dreamed and behold, a ladder was set upon the earth and its top reached to the heaven and there, there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. We understand this is Jacob's ladders, but over to you, Baruch, for your teaching on this. Well, it's, it's interesting because in John's gospel at the end of chapter one, we see this same uh, account being told. But what's interesting is that instead of the angels 
descending and ascending upon a ladder, what's placed there instead of the ladder is the Son of Man, Messiah, speaking about he is the way that, that there's access between man and, and, and God, uh, between earth and heaven. So again, a dream here that, that points to the gospel event, what God's going to do, something that has, again, implications for all of humanity. So not like, like we hear so much about how God's trying to direct my life through a dream. That's not biblical. Dreams impact usually much larger, larger group of people than, than one person's life. Amen. And it's important that you also, uh, you, you said something very important there, Baruch, that I think that needs to be mentioned as well, that the correlation between the Old Testament and the New Testament, because there are a lot of false teachers out there, like I'm gonna, this is me naming this person, Andy Stanley, that says the Old Testament is not relevant, that we should disregard it, and nothing could be further from the truth. It is so significant as it points the way to the New Testament, specifically to the life of Yeshua. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I, I would agree strongly with that. And we need to realize that it's impossible to really understand the, the New Testament revelation if we don't have a great grasp of the Old Testament. And as you said, uh, uh, Mr. Stanley, who wants to, and I think his term is unhitch the New Testament from the old, what a dangerous uh, uh, methodology for, for dealing with God's revelation. Correct. Thank you, Baruch. Next scripture we'll look at in Genesis 40, verse 8. And they said to him, we each had a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. So Joseph said to them, do not interpret interpretations belong to God. Tell them to me, please. Over to you, Brooke. Yeah, now here's an example of a dream being used, not so much as the event of the dream has such worldwide implications, but it was to, to manifest the unique call that Joseph had on his life and to position him where Joseph would, would become a savior in a physical sense of the world. So again, Joseph being used as Daniel was used in order to move them, position them where God wanted them for a very significant role. So once more, we need to, to really see what the Bible, how the Bible uses dreams rather than making it so much about me and my life and how God's trying to communicate to me. Think that, that this movement for dreams, and I'm amazed of the number of people who are getting involved in it. And we think we need to, to realize what it's for, how God has used it in the past. And that's not how the vast majority of people are talking about dreams who sell their, their different things to people today. Amen. Correct, Baruch. And uh, we recently did a video on angels as well. And we touched on this as well. Apart from the false teachers who call themselves Christians, the occult is really casting a wide net to try and uh, lure people into this dreams and the fascination with dreams. I mentioned this before that sometimes people will get an email uh, that will say, look, we, uh, some, I'm going to say it as it is, some witch wants to interpret your dreams and things of that nature. Of course, they'll charge you for it, but that is the occult, extremely demonic and extremely dangerous. So we just encourage people who do not get involved in those type of things at all. Job 33, 15 to 16, in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering in their beds, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction. Over to you, Brooke. Um, here again, God, he can direct things, direct people's lives in a variety of ways. But, but once, once more, we need to realize that, that Job was being used for a major message. Correct. Uh, we won't go into it now, but, but Job, the book of Job, speaks about the righteousness of God, how we need to pursue righteousness. And so, again, a, a way of communicating, but for a larger purpose, a major message that's being revealed through this man's life. And also realizing the, the authority of God over all things. So, again, to, to use this. And so often what people are saying about dreams is that 
my dreams and it's what I want and it's what I think God has for me. And interpreting dreams, I don't think there's any scripture that teaches a person how to interpret dreams. Either God gives that gift and they know it in a unique way, mm. but there's nothing about that. And what you have is that people are, are encouraging others to, to you know, write down your dreams and, and how to interpret them and, and all. Very unbiblical. Nothing in the scripture. We don't see when we talk about positions among the body of believers, you know, apostles and prophets and teachers and such. We don't see dream interpreting being one of the gifts. Amen. Thank you. Next scripture we'll look at is in Numbers 12, verse 6. Then he said, He now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. I speak to him in a dream. God, God does do that for a called prophet. And here again, this, this is the prophets that we read about in the, in the scripture. The Isaiahs, the Ezekiels, the Jeremiahs and such. And, and even though the Bible speaks about a gift of prophecy, it's not speaking and revealing scripture. Scripture, the Bible's closed. There's no additional scripture that's going to be revealed. Sometimes people may have a gift for, for understanding and being able to, to see a prophetic relevance of a passage for a given situation or such. For example, uh, earlier this week, I was speaking to an individual that I respect greatly, and he wasn't prophesying, but, but God had put it upon his heart about how things are being used today for the purposes of the enemy. And he was sharing that, and I thought his words, here again, wasn't prophesying, but I thought his words were very prophetic in guiding people into a better understanding of, of the times that we're living in and how the enemy is trying to utilize things for his purpose and in opposition to the truth of scripture and what believers need to be doing. Amen. Thank you. And you touched on something very important as well that uh, we'll touch on it very quickly now, but you know, there are so many false teachers saying that uh, God has revealed something new to them. Um, you know, they even write books on it. Uh, you know, this is a new mystery that God revealed to me in the Bible and, once again, brothers and sisters, be very, very cautious with those type of uh, statements and teachings. Daniel, of course, uh, I know everyone uh, is very familiar with this scripture and, and the book of Daniel, but Daniel 1.17, as for these four young men, God gave them knowledge and skill, all literature and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Here again, we're talking about one who is, is great in the scripture that God used mightily, that uh, uh, not your, your typical individual, but here again, God gave to him this extraordinary knowledge, this, this skill in, in literature, understanding things. He set himself apart and God used that. It wasn't as though Daniel was interpreting dreams every day and, and, and writing down and was setting up a place to, to interpret dreams for other people. Very unique, very limited, but God gave him this, this gift for a purpose. And here again, in order to move him and, and have an impact in regard to those, those of the children of Israel that were in exile in Babylon and bringing them back to the land. Amen. Thank you. Now, in the book of Acts, we're going to look at this scripture because I wanted you to teach on this book if you can, because... Many of, especially in the New Apostolic Reformation or Bethel Church, all these uh, fal false teachings and churches that call themselves Christians, they always quote this scripture saying, no, we, you will definitely have dreams. But I'm, I'm just going to read the scripture very quickly. Acts 2 verse 17. And it shall come to pass in the last day, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your men, young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Over to you, Brooke. Well, we need to remember that this is from the prophecy of Yoel, Joel. Yes. It begins with uh, a very significant event. You know, the timing, and this is the book of Acts, I realize. And what Peter's doing is saying that the kingdom is approaching. Yes. 
the context is the day of the Lord. Be ready for it. Now's the time through the gospel and through the giving of the Holy Spirit. We are in a very unique time that began with, with Pentecost, Shavuot, pressing into the kingdom by, by faith, accepting that gospel message. But that's the beginning and saying how important this time is from the sense or from the from when the gospel began to be revealed up until the end of, of this age. But, but we have to also realize that Joel used that for that purpose, but there's a greater fulfillment. When, in fact, we are in that, that last days, when we see these cosmic events, the sun turning black, the moon turning red like blood, the, the stars falling from the ground, then it says here, your, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy what that literally means in this case is that they're going to understand what's going on. They're going to have a, a, a comprehension of the times and what's taking place, seeing visions and dreams, seeing these things happen and being able to understand them for, for what they are. The idea that there's coming a time when, when everyone's going to be prophesying, everyone's going to be having visions and dreams, this is not what the scripture is saying. It's saying that people are going to have an understanding of events. They're going to perceive them. These things that were visions given by visions, these things that were given to the prophets by dream, that these people are going to comprehend them. They're going to speak them out. They're going to give wisdom to people that there's going to be an outpouring of revelation for understanding what God is up to. And by the way, that's what visions and dreams are for. The question is, are they having these dreams or are they understanding these visions and dreams that the scripture reveals and are now at that time taking place? So a very big difference between how, as you pointed out, Bethel wants to use it, saying that young people are just going to start prophesying, having dreams and having these visions. Uh, for what purpose? Mm -hmm. It's all the sensationalization of, of things rather than going back and relying upon the scripture as a basis for God's revelation to man, not new revelation and not something that's going to, to uh, take place in a very supernatural way. They're always chasing the supernatural rather than chasing righteousness and holiness and godliness and purity. And repentance, which is very... And lacking. repentance, yes. Um, there are some, uh, some serious and very clear warnings that the Lord gives us in his word about the dangers of dreams and listening to certain individuals that claim to be speaking on behalf of the Lord. I look at Jeremiah 23, 25 to verse 28. I have heard what the prophets have said who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long will this be in the heart of the prophets who prophesy lies? Indeed, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart who try to make my people forget my name by their dreams, which everyone tells his neighbor as their fathers forgot my name for Baal. The prophet who has a dream, let him tell a dream. And he who has my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the shaft to the wheat, says the Lord? The important scripture over to Hebrew. Well, first of all, when we, we look at this, we see that that usually there were numerous false prophets. Yes. And one true prophet. Now, prophets were always rare, not the majority, and the majority were always false prophets. So we see that resurfacing today in, in many movements within with I'll use this term loosely within the Christian movement, mm. but it talks about they forgot my name, name in the Bible synonymous with character. Now let's pursue the character of God to demonstrate that, rather than always trying to to touch that which is supernatural. You know, it is the most supernatural thing is when a human being walks in the spirit, and and does the will of God practicing those things that, that the scripture calls good fruit or masim tovim, good deeds. This is what we're called to do. That's the kingdom business that, that the scripture reveals. But all of this emphasis upon dreams and the supernatural, what it is, it is a, an opportunity. It affords the enemy and demonic influence when we're seeking that which is supernatural. 
Many people don't have the basis for discernment. Tez in the scripture, test the spirits. Many people don't know how to do that, and therefore they're inviting that which is unclean, that which is demonic, to have some type of part of their life. They're, they're open for that communication, and that is extremely dangerous. And I think this scripture from Jeremiah 23, more than anything else, it's a warning to Israel against this same type of phenomena, and that is a pursuit of the supernatural rather than for the pursuit of holiness. And as you said, walking in repentance. Amen. Thank you. We're going to look at Ecclesiastes 5, verse 7. For in the multitude of dreams and many words, there is also vanity, but fear God. Are we, are we giving God the priority of our life, mm -hmm. or are we trying to just run after what, what other people are saying? You know, there's a prophet here, there's a dreamer over there, there's all of these things being being put forth rather than a, a walking in the fear of the Lord, giving him the, the priority of our life, surrendering to him, and being about those things that, that manifest God's character in our life. This is the call of the believer. And to put that with wanting to be a blessing to others, wanting to help to fill the burdens of others and to try to alleviate that. You know, this God is supernatural. And, and I can share with you that God moves supernaturally mm. when, when we are committed to ministry. Yes, no, absolutely. Amen. Um, let's go back to scriptures in Deuteronomy 13 verses 1 to 3. If there arises among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and gives you a sign or a wonder and the sign or the wonder comes to pass, of which I spoke to you saying, let us go after other gods, which you have not known and let us serve them. You shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams for the Lord your God is testing you. Know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Yeah, I can remember a long time ago, I just got out of uh, grad school and I taught this passage. And I remember distinctly the, the name of the, the message that I gave was supernatural, so what? And, and many people, I mean, here's a great example. Even though that there's this person, this dreamer of dreams or a prophet, and he says that there's a sign or a wonder that's going to happen, and it comes true. So he displays, foretells, the supernatural, something that that can't be done in the natural, that's a common thing. And what God is saying is, if this happens and it's confirmed, but he doesn't teach truth, it's a test. Watch out. It's the enemy. They are testing you in order to move you away from where God wants you to be. So just because a supernatural thing takes place, just because someone gives a, a, a vision, a, a prophecy, a dream, and it's right, God's saying that doesn't mean anything. Mm. You have to always base your life upon truth. So the supernatural plus falsehood doesn't prove anything. It's truth that is going to give us the right perspective for understanding the supernatural things of God. God is, and I want to say that again, a miraculous God, a God of signs and wonders. But when we look at the gospel, we see overwhelmingly these signs and these wonders that, that let's just leave it to Messiah. What Messiah did, his miracles, they were always, if you check it out, it's always to confirm a teaching or lead up to a teaching that he gave. So these supernatural things in the scripture they always point to or confirm the truth of God. Deuteronomy 13 is saying there's a supernatural event. The source, obviously, is the enemy, demonic, satanic. And the whole purpose is not to confirm truth, but to lead people away from the truth. So the enemy does just that. Works in the supernatural in order to move us away from where God wants us to be. Amen. Well said. And I concur with that, Baruch. I mean, even... Uh... How you touched on that, yes, the enemy does work in the supernatural power. There are branches of the enemy that he uses, like tarot cards, astrology, fortune tellers. 
And they regularly were mixing something to do with dreams. So once again, brothers and sisters, a strong word of caution. Uh, do not associate yourself with any of that. That is the occult and you're in risk of opening yourself up to the demonic. So, you know, just let's focus on the word of God. Uh, like Baruch said, our God that we serve, he's certainly an almighty, powerful, supernatural God, but we need discernment. So uh, just be cautious. Very importantly, like we touched on in the recent teaching about angels, to avoid false teachings of dreams. Now, why? Second Peter 2, 3. And in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. Their judgment from long ago is not idle and their destruction is not asleep. So uh, you will see that most of the time, probably 99% of the time, whenever these people, it's uh, uh, with these false teachings, they're just trying to lure you, lure you in just to exploit you false words, and it's all with their greed. Just some examples there. Kingdom uh, Gravity, I think they're called. Uh, they've got a school of dream intelligence, um, you know, where they teach people on how to best effectively discern their development, uh, dream language. And, of course, there are fees associated with that. Our old friends, as usual, Bethel Dream Life School of Interpretation, of 2022 i mean the, we could put pages and pages and pages of this but we just thought it's important to give people some warning that um they're just out to exploit you and um, basically take your money um i guess over to you brooke for your closing comments on this very important subject one of the things that i believe is almost a a catch word a a word that that is a word of a preying upon people is just what we're talking about, dreams. And what's happening is that there is a, a convergence that people are, are putting forth. And what I mean by that is they, they talk for a moment about God's purpose for your life. And then they, they move that to your dreams. Mm -hmm. And they're very subtle. What they try to do is to convince you that God's purpose for your life are your dreams, what you want. And that, that God has given you these dreams, and I'm speaking here about desires, hopes, what you want your life to be, but they use that word dreams so frequently. And, and the whole purpose is to do this, what I call a, a idolatrous Christianity, which means that, that Christ came, that all of these things that, that, that the Bible speaks of is really to help me achieve what I want that God's there to assist me and to walk me through and empower me to, to achieve my goals. They use the term, my dreams. And it's such a danger because what it does is it gives a, a spiritual stamp of approval upon what I would call, and what's called in Hebrew, the Yitzhah, that evil inclination, that carnal nation, uh, uh, nature that people have. So it's almost as God's there to help me do my my desires the desires of the flesh my dreams what i want to achieve and usually and the last thing i'll say about this is that it's so frequent that when someone says you know i got a dream it's always wow how god wants to do something in my life that god is is lifting me up separating me making me me different when the spirit of god moves in a person's life it's not for self-exaltation but it's usually teaching us to, to get under someone and lift them up, bless them, help them to, to humble yourself, to submit to, to someone else's needs, ministering to them so that they can experience the love of God, know God's love, that you become a provision of God's love for someone else. That's spirituality, not what, what many people are being sold in these schools of dream intelligence. I don't even know what what they mean about that, but but that's the, the the pitfall and the danger that that the enemy is putting forth to a lot of, of people who are who are believers, who are sincere, but who are misguided. They may be hurting. They're 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 looking to something to hold on to in some turbulent times, and they're being and I think you use this word exploited. Yep, correct. And uh, those those are catchphrases that you need to be very careful with. Dreams, activate the prophetic, 
um, you know, it usually comes from uh, prosperity teachers or word of faith or the new apostolic reformation. So it's all about, uh, like we've touched on in previous videos, that uh, seven mountain mandates that everything can be beautiful and the best thing in the world before Jesus returns back to earth, which is totally false teaching. So just be cautious and just keep an ear out and be attentive to those catch words. That's how they lure you in. But anyway, I've enjoyed your teaching today, Baruch. I hope it's blessed everyone watching this video. Uh, if you have any questions, as I always say, please write to us at australasia at loveisrael.org. We'll be happy to uh, answer your questions as soon as we can, or we can receive your comments. And once again, Baruch, I'd like to thank you for your time. I've certainly enjoyed your teaching on this subject. It's a very important subject. And uh, we pray that it's certainly blessed everyone watching. So from Baruch in Israel and from myself here in Sydney, Australia, we'd like to say thank you. And God willing, we'll see you very soon for the next video discussion. Shalom and God bless.